I'm like, okay, good, I made the right decision. But it was so worth it. It was definitely a shock. The make sure not to land into buildings. Like, uh, the 9-11 jokes. It's just a stereotype. She didn't believe I would actually do it. He didn't want, want me to do it. Wow, your culture is amazing. Your yeah. food is amazing. I mean, what are you on the fence about? It's like, I feel like it's a no-brainer. Hey, Slingers, it's Matthew from Sling Palette Academy. This week, we're celebrating National Arab American History Month with four of our current students here at Sling. In this sit-down interview, we're gonna talk a little bit about the culture, how they got into aviation, and what it's like here at Sling. Enjoy the video. Hi, my name is Rola. I'm from Cairo, Egypt, and I'm finishing up with PPL, private pilot. My name is Fadi. I'm from Syria, and I'm finishing up instrument. My name is Amr. I'm from uh, Cairo, Egypt. I'm finishing my commercial right now. My name is Mark Hanna. Um, my parents are both Egyptian. I was born here in sunny California. I am working on my instrument rating. I was uh, actually watching a Netflix documentary about Boeing, and uh, I, at the time, I was working at a dealership as a finance manager, and I figured this is something I might be pretty good at. Let me try it out. I came to the school, I did a discovery flight with John. Uh, after the discovery flight, I just signed up, and here I am. I grew up liking planes. I never took action because it wasn't very common for uh, just girls in, in an Arab country doing it, so I thought it was just a male's job. Years later, I met um, a friend also who was in aviation and I started talking about it more with my dad and it became an idea then it became reality. Actually it started with me when I was a little baby, when I was young. Uh, I always loved watching planes and, and I was always interested in being a pilot, you know, so here I am, yeah. I didn't really grow up into around aviation or nothing like that, but I was a business owner for a couple years and then decided I wanted something more in my life. I don't want to just be in retail. So I sold the business, took a discovery flight after I sold the business. <laughs> but I fell in love with it and then packed my stuff, moved to Kansas and started my career out there. I didn't know anything about aviation. I started watching this guy on YouTube that was a pilot and he had made a video of how to get started. So he's like, for step one, you know, look for a flight school. So I went online, I started searching flight schools Initially, I didn't know about Sling. I, I, it was a flight school in Long Beach. And I was like, okay, I live in Torrance. So I was like, okay, that's not a bad commute. Let me check it out. And then I did more research online. I found out that Sling was here. Um, so I, I never even went to the Long Beach school. I just came here. I went on the Discovery flight. I didn't have a comparison of other schools. Um, I kind of knew what the other schools were charging. So when they told me how much sling was, I was like, okay, I'll just go here. It's convenient, it's next to my house. The planes look nice. I kind of just trusted what people were telling me. Um, and I signed up and then hearing stories from other students at other schools, I'm like, okay, good. I made the right decision. I found sling because of the chief pilot that used to be here, uh, Sam Ben Simon. He's the one that told me about it. I was telling him about all the trouble that I was having my other flight school and he just convinced me of being here. And then honestly, after coming here, it's huge difference because I got the comparison of other schools compared to Sling. And with other schools, it is not the same. Like the one I was at, there was no structure. Planes were always down. Didn't have enough planes for the students. The cost was way too high. The weather was bad. Like with just so many issues and without throwing names out there or school names, it would just, something I would never do again. I think I searched on Google uh, Maps. I was like, flight school's near me. It wasn't really close. It was like a couple miles, like 40 miles or something. And I made an appointment on the phone and then I came and she was like, yeah, we'll just show you around. And I was excited to see how things are. I had no idea I was gonna take a flight. And then John was there. He was like, oh, let's go fly. And I, I had nothing planned. And I, again, I had zero experience. I was like, do I need a passport? Because. It was this last minute. So we were just in the PV area, Palos Verdes area. And then I was like, is this Catalina? He was like, yeah, this is Catalina. I was like, I've been trying to go there for a long time and stuff. And he's like, you want to go there? I was like, like right now? He's like, yeah. 
In a couple of minutes, we just literally like landed in Catalina. It was sunset time, so it was beautiful. You can see like the, the beautiful rays and like felt like a dream and I fell in love with it. I didn't even look at any other school and I was like, I'm just gonna try to come here. Honestly, I'm pretty jealous of your first flight. Yeah. I think yeah. none of us got yeah. to go to Catalina. I flew over Catalina though. On your first flight on Discovery? I was looking for schools all over the country because I started actually in 2012, long time ago, yeah, in Saudi Arabia. Last year, I was looking and uh, trying to find something like cheap, uh, quality, uh, good people, you know, um, and I found Slink. Uh, I took a Discovery flight. I like the environment. How did you go? Like, did you Google? Yes, Google. Actually, I was searching. The first thing actually came up was Slink. Uh, and I like the price, I like the environment, I like the, uh, the people here, you know, the management, how they work with you and everything, you know. The Cessnas I still fly, they were clapped out Cessnas. Like the newest one we had was like a 1968, I believe, and all steam gauges. So going from a high wing old Cessnas to airplanes that are only a couple years old with full glass cockpit, and a low wing, it was like drastic change. Mm. So like all the information that I had programmed in my mind of flying Cessnas had to be thrown out the window <laughs> and then learn the sling. But it was so worth it because it just so nice to have a full glass cockpit in front of you. You don't have to worry about steam gauges or nothing. I'm loving it. We should do an Arabic, uh, an Arab, uh, Arab group. We should do an Arab group. Arab it's not group. established yet but we're working on it. it. We're gonna work on it. Arabs are just, are like shattered around. We can't, we can't, we're not like as a group, you know. There are like a Latino and there is Asian uh, clubs. clubs, but there's no really Arabs. Um. And there's a lot of Arabs in the industry too. And yeah. it's crazy because I didn't think there was that many Arabs in the industry, yeah. but like the more I'm into it, the more Arabs that I'm finding, like even all of you guys, like I didn't know, I didn't expect to see any yeah. I didn't, even know, I didn't know if Amr was an Arab until he, he opened his mouth. He's like, started speaking. Because <laughs> he, does, he doesn't look Egyptian at all. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. If you guys have a video, picture of him a couple months back, the curly, curly it's hair. All the curly, big hair. Yeah. Hair. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's good to have an Arabic community, at least like to, you know, push each other, reach your goals, you know. I do get discriminated mostly online, uh, specifically on my solo video that I've done. I feel like the reason why I went to the algorithm was because there's a lot of people debating. Oh, like, I hate feminist people, I hate feminist women, uh, they should, um, should get married and stay with the children at home, all that, and make sure not to land into buildings, uh, training to land into buildings. I think it's good to see a change and try to like, break that stereotype. Um, it's also getting old, really, you know? It's, it's like, okay, I heard that joke before, like, get, at least get me something different. At least, you know? So Try true. All they have is like, land the building, like, okay, you have anything else? Go back to your country, you're like, all those like, comments, you know, like, irrelevant comments. Uh, honestly, you get numb to them by time, but those are the kind of discrimination I get. I don't, I feel like I get more online rather than anywhere really. I think the only time I really got discriminated like in person was someone was doing a comedy script and they found out I was in aviation and then they they were just like oh we need more people like you to actually land and not land into buildings. Yeah, it's the same thing with me is like uh, the 9-11 jokes. When they hear my last name and they know I'm a pilot you know what I'm saying it's like same exact jokes and um, I don't like that but uh, I, don't, I don't see this here in Sling. I don't see this actually in California. In, in general, you know, but that was like in Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina. That's, yeah, I experienced that over there. It's just a stereotype people yeah. just usually have, like yeah. without getting to know you. And the sad part is a lot of people would actually come to me and be like, I never knew you were like that. Extrovert, trying to make friends, just be a normal human being. And that's apparently weird. Once people get to know us, like they, yeah, individually they love us. for us, like, wow. Your culture is amazing. Your yeah. food is amazing. Your religion is actually good. So like giving and you give a lot of people stuff. You're so nice, like. No, actually it's, it's more outside the aviation community. In the aviation community, actually, no, I didn't, I've never seen it, no. But when they know that you're in aviation, it becomes more. I don't know, I feel like for a woman, I think it's a little bit more if you're wearing a headscarf because it's like, oh, I can spot you. Like, I know you are that, you're practicing that. So therefore, I think you are that. Out of. Everybody in the Arab community trying to be a pilot would be the worst for uh, 
for females. Yeah. Because like the headscarf, they're just gonna get discriminated right away just because of the headscarf. When I told my family I was gonna sell my business and become a pilot, my mom looked at me and she was like, look, if you're gonna do something, you gotta do it all the way. Otherwise, don't say it. And so literally the next day, I sold my business, started figuring everything out. Not even a month after that, I was, li I was already moved to Kansas. Wow. But they know it's not something that I would, like I was thinking about growing up or it's a career that I was thinking about, none of it. It was just a random thought. Because one of my friends, he's an air traffic controller and um, he offered me to take me flying one day. So I, I went flying with him and I, that's when I, I just fell in love with it. I was like, this is what I want to do. And that's when I brought up to the family. It was definitely a shock, but they support it 100%. They're actually like the number one supporter right now. Yes, same thing with me. Like um, that was like 10 years ago uh, when I told my dad I want to become a pilot and he started laughing. <laughs> it was like, ah, uh, well, okay, <laughs> let's see, you know. I asked him to do it and he didn't want, want me to do it. And I went and did it by myself. Uh, without telling me anything. That was back in Saudi Arabia. And I surprised them in my first solo. And then he started crying. And then since then, yeah, he, he, he supported me, like number one, yeah. My wife thought I was joking. <laughs> I woke up in the morning and I was like, hey, I think I'm gonna become a pilot. And she was like, okay. <laughs> and then that same day I came, did my discovery flight and I signed up. And I went home and I was like, hey, I'm in flight school now. And she was like, oh, great. <laughs> She didn't believe I would actually do it, but now she's supportive and happy that I'm doing something that's that I think is fun and that I enjoy doing. So yeah, everything's good. I mentioned to my dad since we kept meeting like aviation people, and then when I decided to go to a flight school, I actually didn't tell him. I surprised him with a video of me and Catalina in a plane, and he was like, what did you do? <laughs> and he's like, you're so cool. So the thing about Arab, my Arab parents, um, if you're watching this, I love you. I talked to my dad first and then my dad and I went to my mom and we were like, hey, so she's gonna, I'm gonna do this and he was like, she's gonna do this and then my mom was like, my daughter? Hell nah. She wasn't into it that much, but by time when I started doing the Discovery Tour and all that stuff, and when I sent her the pictures, she was like, she saw that the happiness in my face and she was like, okay. Yeah, she, she, like, she was like, okay, it's not just an idea. She actually like, went on her, like, out of her comfort zone and she did all that. And then when I sent him the Catalina stuff, um, you can tell he was like, okay, um, you can do this, you can pursue this, but please get a degree first. So I, that was the, the deal with me and my parents. Like, you do this, but you still try to get a degree. And then hopefully they get to fly with you as well. Oh yeah, I, yeah. And then I told my mom, I'm like, hey, um, like, inshallah, like when I get my uh, my pilot, would you private pilot license? Would you want to like ride with me? She's like, I'd even ride with you when you had your driving license. <laughs> so, no. And I asked my dad. My dad's like, okay, just get your license and we'll figure it out. So I don't have a yes from no one until now. I think it's a it's a cultural thing amongst all mm -hmm. the Arab countries yeah. that they push education. There's a a very large group of dentists and doctors and attorneys. So uh, education and the Arab culture is a, is a foundational thing. So when any young Arab student goes to their parents and says, hey, I want to go into aviation, I think the stereotypical Arab family is going to suggest and recommend that they push an academic career versus an aviation career. So that's something that we all struggle with. I was a little bit different because I'm older, I'm 32. So I had already finished all of that and I was already working. Um, so it's more of a career change for me. The younger generation that's choosing between college and aviation, that's where they might see a little pushback from their families. Um, but it's, it's just as rewarding. You're gonna go to a four year school, you're gonna take out all these loans, you're gonna it's gonna be difficult finding a job where you come to aviation. It's not a four year period. It's gonna be much shorter than that. You're gonna be making a lot more money right off the bat. You're not gonna spend an additional four years in medical school or dental school and take out more student loans. So if, if you're weighing options of quality of life, loans that you're paying back and how much money you're gonna make initially, and even in the long term, uh, you get 15 days off every single month. You can only work 100 hours per month versus being a doctor, you're 
You're gonna be on call every single night, every single weekend. You're not gonna be able to do things with your family. In aviation, you get that flexibility, you get that, you know, all of the, the best qualities of life and uh, a similar income to being a doctor, attorney, dentist. So you get the best of both worlds. Not a lot of people know that. Um, they don't know that aviation can be just as good as any of these other careers. Hold on a second. You're 32? Yeah. <laughs> Why did I think you were like my age? I look young. You look 25. You really do, bro. You look like 23 to 25, not more than that. Yeah, thank you. I was, I just <laughs> got like shot. You look 40 or something. <laughs> You're lying. I like he looks 40. I was like, dude, if you watch the video, and the camera was pointing in my eyes, my eyes went like this when he said 32. <laughs> I'm 32. You should like, zoom in then. 30? How old do you think I am? 28 to 30. <laughs> Older you are. I'm, I'm way older than that. 45? Yeah, 45. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 35. How old are you? I'm 25. How old do I look like? I'm 23. 22. 22. Get numb to those bad comments. Put your head high and don't, don't think about like people's comments. Like that's the worst thing you can ever do to yourself. I would say when it comes to like doing this as a career, if somebody wants to do it, I would definitely support it 100%. It gets hard. It gets really hard and really tough. I almost stopped my, this career twice. I couldn't pass the written on my private. And I literally told everybody around me, if I don't pass this third time, that's it. I'm dropping and leaving. And then I ended up just passing and stayed in it. And honestly, that's the best decision I made because being able to fly in different areas and seeing different point of views, I feel like we're pretty lucky yeah. to be flying out of Torrance, taking off right into the ocean, sunset, sunrise. Catalina. Yeah, you, you can't beat that. This is the best career you can yeah. join where it's, you know, it's hard work, but it pays off at the end. It's definitely worth it. If you're on the fence, I mean, what are you on the fence about? It's like, I feel like it's a no brainer. You're going to get quality of life. You're going to make good money. You're gonna spend time with your family, more time with your family doing this than anything else. The biggest thing is you can take your entire family with you on vacation as often as you like, and you're not gonna to have to pay for it. All your airline tickets are gonna be free. One thing I learned that Sam told me about, because at first I took a while to join Sling, because I wanted to save, and then he told me something that I will never forget. He was like, the more you save now, the more you're gonna lose at the end. You know, when people, when it comes to like financing aviation, financing this career, it is expensive. But take out a loan and get it done with. Because the more you're trying to save to pay for your career, if you don't have the money up front, that money you're saving, it's gonna take you years to save that money. And every year you're waiting to save the money to go to school, you're losing three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 that year down the line. So don't wait. just. Take the loan. There's ways out there you can do it. If you're, if there's will, you know there's a way. So, definitely find a way to do it and just start. Huge thanks to Sling for making this feel like a family, like a home where everybody's welcome, nobody's discriminated, nobody's judged. Everyone's here is friendly. Everybody says hi in the morning. Everybody checks on everybody. So yes, hundred percent. All the staff all the fellow aviators, Jamie. and especially our CFIs. And our CFIs and Jamie and uh, Wayne. All the staff everybody. basically that work at Sling yes. so we don't miss anyone out. Yeah, yeah, everybody. Our amazing, Haley, yes. our amazing Haley. production crew. Uh, you guys are amazing, <laughs> that's right, yes, yes. But here, yeah, they, they really follow up. Um, even Jamie herself, like she will text you if there is anything you need to do. And did you do this? Did you do that? You know what I'm saying? Did you study your king school and all this stuff? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, this support here is insane yeah if if you and experience the energy is good too the energy, energy is great is like yeah. everyone keeps uh, you, uh, you find people smiling you're having a rough day after your flight and you come back and everyone's like hey how are you and you forget about what happened in the flight take care of your body too take care of yourself lifestyle you got to take care of that record make sure you have a clean record make sure you have a healthy body most importantly a healthy mindset yes sling has a gym too yes. our school has a gym behind this camera right yeah. now um that's how health is important how many times have you used the gym here at sling <laughs> <laughs> so don't forget to like subscribe and leave a comment it really helps us with our channel we really appreciate it
behind the gym, there's 24 hour fitness that I go to. So let's <laughs> make myself feel better. I'm <laughs> going